Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out the Seven Nation Army by the White Stripes, the incredible Jack White on guitar. Now, uh, the original recording was actually recorded in open A tuning, so you have to tune the guitar completely differently, and Jack's doing some fretted stuff. He's using a slide as well at different points, so that's kind of a bit beyond the kind of the beginner approach that I'm taking in this lesson, but I'm going to show you a couple of slightly beyond uh, beginner ideas as well. Now, the first thing you might have noticed in the intro there is that uh, maybe when I'm playing the riff it doesn't sound like your guitar when you're playing that and that's because I'm using an octave effect so uh, with the effect on at the moment the guitar sounds a bit like a bass because it's moving all of the sound down one octave if I turn that effect off it'll sound much more like a guitar you'd recognize <laughs> Okay, so if you want to get into using your effects, you can have a look in whatever effects boxes you've got and see if you can find an octave pedal and move it an octave lower. Okay, you'll turn the mix up to 100% so you only have the, the octave, the affected sound, and none of the original guitar sound coming through at all, if you want to go for that. But you don't have to, okay? Just thought I'd explain that uh, straight off. So the effect is off for now. And the main riff, very, very easy. On the fifth string, we're playing seventh fret, Seventh, ten, seven, five, three, two. Seven, seven, ten, seven, five, three, two. You can even do it with one finger. In fact, it sounds better to me if you use one finger than if you use, like I would normally have played it, first finger, fourth finger, first finger, and then slid my first finger back. Or maybe even played it in the one position. So used a... It's kind of more logical. So I don't have to move my hand around, but it sounds better, I think, just using the first finger, seven, seven, ten, seven, five, three, two. Now also note that I'm using a bit of palm mute, so I'm using the edge of my hand here to just rest on the strings, so instead of this, if I put the mute on, okay, not too much, you don't get a note. So you gradually move your hand from, from the here, gradually moving it back, and you'll find there's a spot where, you, where it kind of becomes a bit more of a thud, and that's kind of the effect that you're looking for for this. So that riff is used through all of the different verses, so obviously very, very important that you get that bit right, but it changes sound when it goes into the pre-chorus and you get a distortion sound. So I've got a little distortion pedal here, so I can jump on that, and it's... Okay, so I've gone from my little kind of bass sound. Now I'm pressing on the distortion pedal and turning that octave effect off. Okay, now this one part needs power chords, okay? So we'd start off with a G power chord, which is the uh, third fret with the thickest string root. And just one and two and three and four and all down strums. And the next chord is A, and you've got two options here. You can either go to an open A chord, which sounds probably most authentic, but it might be slightly easier to go from there, just move that G chord up two frets, and you'll get to the A chord. So G, A. The other advantage of uh, moving up to the A at the fifth fret is you're a bit closer to the next chord, okay? So the good news is that if you've been playing the riff with just your first finger, that bass riff, the... If you use that first finger position as the root note for a power chord, okay, so starting off with, we'd have the first finger in the seventh fret of the fifth string, then you'd put your third finger down in the ninth fret of the fourth string, and little finger underneath on the ninth fret of the third string, which is an E power chord, we just moved the first finger around just like we did for the riff, and we actually got the first part of the riff. Second time through, there's just this little variation where when he hits the C, he slides it two frets up to the D, then plays the C again, and then back to the B. Okay, so it's seven, seven, ten, seven, five, three, two. The second time through, seven, seven, ten, seven, five, three, slide, three, two. Okay. Okay, 
don't have to do that as a slide, but again, it does sound a little bit more authentic to do it that way. And with a song like this that's very simple, I think it's worth having a little bit of a look at the details. But not if you're a complete beginner. If you're real new to guitar, you're going to find that a little bit tricky. So just play it any way you can. Do the best with what you got, and then as you progress as a guitar player, you can start to fill in a few of these details. Now. One way that makes it sound a lot more authentic straight away is actually to use a full bar chord. And it's actually not much harder than doing the power chord. So if we had our regular E chord there, E power chord there, so just the thicker strings muted and then 7th fret, ninth fret, ninth fret, mute, mute. That's what you should have for an E power chord. If you lift off little finger and you let your third finger bar down, and play all of the strings except the thinner string. So you want to kind of lift it up a bit. So the thinner string is not is not played, it should be muted. So we've got the thicker string muted as well, with the tip of the first finger, then seven, nine, 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 mute. Okay? And that's the effect because Jack was in an open tuning. It, he, he was effectively playing that chord, but he was doing it very easily, just moving one finger around, right? But uh, if you use that shape instead of a power chord, it sounds a bit more authentic again. <laughs> Okay, you don't have to play it that way, but that's another one of those kind of getting up from playing a beginner way to playing a little bit more authentic. So once you've got those riffs under your fingers, what you should definitely be doing is jamming along with the original recording. Not only is it loads of fun, it's really good for you as well. It'll really help you with your timekeeping, okay? Making sure that you get your timing really solid all of the way through. Now, that original riff, I haven't even tried to give you the count, like one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, because it's really complicated. It's a much, much easier riff just to learn by listening. And you'll kind of pick that up with the whole feel of the whole thing if you're playing along with your original recording. So I definitely recommend uh, you do that as much as you can. So uh, I really hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Remember there's hundreds more lessons over at justinguitar.com. Please subscribe if you like what I do and I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.